I hope you don't mind the uh, the Hawaiian shirt because this is the first 70 degree weather that we got in North Carolina for quite some time. But anyway, on to more pressing matters like this 2022 Mazda CX-5 Turbo Signature. I've tested the Mazda CX-5 since 2019 and I've driven every model since then. So I have a pretty good understanding and grasp at this point as to what Mazda is trying to achieve here and the subtle improvements that they make over time. So for 2022, there are certainly some more changes and I wanna talk about that here in this video. So let's start out with that first and give you some context and talk about the exterior before we get into this drive. because we have the turbocharged engine it's certainly very potent so let's talk about that first that's going to be the first change for 2022 it now produces an extra six horsepower so now we have 256 horsepower and 320 pounds feet of torque that is with premium fuel it goes down a bit to like 227 horsepower and 310 pounds feet of torque if you put regular 87 in it but that's the good thing, you can put 87 in if you so choose. Now, if you go for the regular four cylinder, the non-turbo, the two and a half liter, uh, it'll produce 187 horsepower and 186 pounds feet of torque, and that's with regular fuel, with 87. There is no advantage if you put premium fuel in the non-turbo charged engine. So that's a good thing because I actually recommend most people getting the base model CX-5 because Mazda gives you so much in the base level trim that I think that's going to be the best use of your money for most people. It's going to start at around $25,900 and it gives you every single safety option as standard including the blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, forward collision braking assistance, lane keep assist, all of these things right that's all standard with every CX-5. And another big change for 2022 is the fact that all-wheel drive is now standard across the board. I think the starting price has gone up around $500 or $600, but the good thing is they made the all-wheel drive standard. I think they used to charge $1,400 to add all-wheel drive to just about any Mazda CX-5 trim. So because of that, I certainly don't mind the subtle price hike. Now, other changes, of course, reside with the exterior. We have these uh, kind of new headlights and I think new taillights as well, but mainly with the headlights, it kind of has like this BMW-esque look to it. Certainly looks good, I don't mind it. We have a slightly new redesigned grille up front. And most importantly, if you get a fully loaded model like you see here with the turbo signature, you'll get a fully painted car. There's, there's none of that black plastic cladding around the vehicle. And because of that, this car looks great. I've always liked the design of the CX-5 and they've continued to improve that a little bit more here for 2022. And I think we have some new gray 17 inch wheel options for the more base model trims, right? And this car would ride like butter with 17 inch wheels. So keep that in mind. And the other changes for 2022 reside with the driving aspect of it. So let's go ahead and let's transition over into this driving segment now. Okay, so we already talked about the power plant and the power figures that both engines make. Definitely some potent engines. But the other changes for 2022 are with the with the chassis and with the suspension. This is now the most communicative CX-5 to drive in my opinion. And they wanted to improve this handling and I think they have definitely achieved that with this. The chassis is a little bit more solid so the byproduct of that is going to be a quieter vehicle a more stable ride quality, and of course, better handling dynamics. The brakes are pretty well tuned in here as well. You have to get in on them a little bit more. Uh, it's a more progressive brake pedal, but I do like it. It certainly brings this vehicle to a halt. The only real con with this vehicle is going to be when you floor it initially from a stop, it kind of has like this torque steer effect so it kind of gets swayed into one direction but in my opinion that's not really a con because if you drive it hot-blooded like that you are definitely missing the point of this vehicle yes they have improved the the handling dynamics but that doesn't mean that driving it foot to the floor all the time and driving it at its limit is where this is the happiest because it's not 
the extra speed and the better handling is best suited for calm driving because you have a vehicle that has a more reduced body roll effect. So when you take subtle turns, like your everyday left-hand turns, your right-hand turns, the people inside, the occupants, they're not being moved around or anything like that. And also this manages to be comfortable without being overly floaty, if that makes sense. It doesn't jostle you about. There's no unnecessary movements with the vehicle. It remains planted even when you go over smaller bumps, larger bumps, that's not an issue. But you, the driver, know exactly what's going on with the road, if that makes sense. You know exactly what kind of terrain you're driving over. So that, in my opinion, actually adds to the confidence. And I think that has to do with the suspension tweaks that they've made here. So overall, I think for what this is, they programmed it as optimally as possible to give you decent driving dynamics while still keeping that european s driving feel because that's kind of what Mazda is going for with all their vehicles it kind of has like this audi-ish driving feel to it a little bit more detached you could even argue lack soul but the reason why it's not a problem for me is because this is so refined so quiet so smooth for the price category that this is competing with this is truly well done because that's what most people want they want that smoother quieter refined experience and that's what Mazda is giving you here for not that much money to be honest with you this is achieving what those kind of BMW X3 slash Q5 vehicles are doing at a fraction of the price now of course those vehicles are going to offer a slightly more cleaned up driving experience not quite as much of that torque steer or anything like that a little bit more of a snappier transmission but speaking of transmission that's another thing that they've improved for this category for 2022 we now have a more refined six-speed automatic they made some changes to make it feel a little bit smoother a little bit more quicker to respond and that is true that is another aspect of this that i really approve of and i do notice on an everyday drive so the communication the handling and the transmission definitely changes that i certainly noticed ride quality isn't drastically different from the previous model years but it does do a great job absorbing the smaller bumps and the larger bumps driving this foot to the floor isn't where you're going to get that satisfaction like when you drive this and you floor it you know it doesn't light your world on fire it just gives you that effortless power to pass people right it's a smooth and refined power not one that's made for drag racing, okay? But I will say on the Mazda 3s and the Mazda 6s that I've tested for 2021, those vehicles have a more peppier feeling turbocharged engine. And that makes sense because they're trying to be a little bit more sportier than this. And one subtle con with the regular four cylinder is the fact that it has cylinder deactivation. Not many people like that. So what I recommend is if you're going to be keeping this car for the long term, maybe get like a 7 or 10 year warranty on it that covers everything on it, including the powertrain, the electronics, and you should be good to go there. Plus, it's a brand new Japanese vehicle. Warranties don't really cost anything, especially from the dealership. So I would just pay up for it and you'll be covered. You'll have a headache free experience because it's truly remarkable what they've been able to do here. This is my kind of go to $26,000 vehicle for its category. But if you want to pay up for like a turbo model, that's totally justified as well. It's going to be around $37,000. That's also justified because this is kind of that complete package. I wouldn't get the signature like you see here. I would just get the regular turbo model and you should be really happy with it. The regular four cylinder feels quick off the line, but then it starts to kind of die out out on the highway. But as a whole, I think most people should be satisfied with that engine. Uh, and the fuel economy, let's kind of talk about that before we get into the interior segment, is very good for what it is. Even when I beat the crap out of this car, I'm still getting like 18.5 MPG. So that is a very respectable figure since this vehicle weighs around 3,800 pounds. Or maybe close to 4,000 pounds in this configuration with the turbo turbocharged engine. But I think it's rated to get 22 in the city, 27 out of the highway, and the regular four-cylinder gets about 24 in the city, 30 out on the highway. You should definitely be able to beat the highway MPG figures, driving at 75 miles per hour. So well done there. This is definitely a vehicle where, you know, they continue to improve it, but really they don't even have to. Um, they could have just chilled after 20, 
2021 or 2020. Uh, I thought that vehicle was pretty much as good as it needed to be, but these subtle improvements, it's nice to know that they're due. A subscriber of mine, I think, bought one, uh, a CX-5 base model for his daughter, and, and him and his daughter were both thrilled with the vehicle, as they should be. It's a fantastic vehicle for the price, but if you want to pay up for it, definitely justified as well. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's transition over into this interior segment now. Okay, so now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior space. Interior hasn't really changed at all. So if you've seen my previous CX-5 videos, it's the same great solid interior space with excellent material choices, especially for the signature trim levels. You have a lot more leather being used, nice little wood and aluminum trimming. So it's truly exceptional. And again, that's what I'm saying. If you want to pay up and get one of the turbo models, it's totally justified because it is that nice of a place to spend time and also to drive, of course. But as I stated, I mean, I really do like the, the base model because you get so much with that. Of course, you get all the safety tech, as I already stated, but even the cloth seats that Mazda uses is really comfortable. It's more of a premium cloth seat, if that makes sense. But as we see here, these leather seats look great, feel nice, they're supple, soft, and they offer great lumbar support for the driver. So it's gonna be a non-fatiguing experience. And these seats are actually new for 2022. It's to make sure that the driver actually stays stable in the seat when you're making turns and everything like that. Uh, I don't really notice a huge difference, but regardless, I've always liked Mazda seats ever since 2019, so that's not really an issue. The leather-wrapped steering wheel with the buttons on it, as well as the leather-wrapped gear lever knob, that's all something that you get standard even with the base CX-5s. What you really get when you move up, I mean, you can read this for yourself, but you get a little bit more creature comforts, right? Like when you move up to the select, you will be getting dual zone climate control, a little bit more USB ports and things like that. And obviously you move up even further, you get the heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel like you see here, a sunroof. So that's what you mainly get. Uh, also, when you go up to a select CX-5, you will be getting a six speaker audio system. So I'm guessing the base model comes with like a four speaker is what it is. Uh, we have here the Bose audio system, which truly does sound excellent. Probably the best sounding audio system for like in the normal car segment, right? Compared to like Hondas, Toyotas, uh, Kias, Hyundais, things like that. This is kind of the best sounding one. It's clear, it's crisp, it's got plenty of bass. And we have here the heads up display and we have here a new MI drive mode selector. I didn't really talk about it in the driving segment, but I guess I'll talk about it here. Uh, I really like to just drive around in the normal mode. I don't really like driving in, in the sport mode for 99% of the vehicles out on the road. Sport mode doesn't really do a whole lot other than keep you in a, in a lower gear. So that's about it. And you're just wasting more fuel. In the normal mode, this does great. That's really the best way to drive it. And as I already stated, driving this more mellow is where you're gonna find the most satisfaction in the CX-5. But you do have some paddle shifters here, so if you wanna just manually shift down some gears, that's certainly useful, but you know, again, it does a great job in the normal mode as well. Uh, just a subtle delay, but it's really not that bad. It's got plenty of torque to make up for it, especially with the turbocharged engine. Uh, you have automatic headlights, one touch up and down windows for all four windows. That's something you get standard, and also, uh, I'm not sure about the base model, but this particular vehicle does have double paint glass. That's one of the reasons why this vehicle is so quiet. And um, we also have Toyo tires on here, 19 inch wheels. And there's not really a whole lot of tire noise coming from these tires either. And the ride quality is great with these 19 inch wheels, but 17 inch wheels would be amazing on this. So well done there with the refinement. Again, the chassis has a lot to do with it as well. All the tech in here is really simplified and it's more black and white, if you will, but it's really premium looking. I like the screen quality. We have here a 10.3 inch screen, which is gonna be standard across the board with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. And yeah, I've praised this infotainment in the past. It's so easy to use. There's literally no learning curve. It's elegant, it's clean, it's not a touch screen, so it's never gonna be dirty or covered with fingerprints. You use it with this dial, and yeah, definitely one of the more better infotainment systems that you can get. Climate control completely separated from the screen, 
and that's also really easy to use has good tactile feedback from it uh, the knobs feel good very audi-esque if you will same thing with the kind of electronic gauge cluster here easy to use looks great and kind of carries that more minimalistic design you have a sunglass holder here which is always a great thing to see some cars don't include that like some bmws don't have a sunglass holder but you have that here uh, garage home link all the practical things that you could ask for it's all here everything works everything is simple it's the same great mazda interior that we've all come to appreciate but i guess the major con with this vehicle is the overall kind of lack of cargo space it's not a super large vehicle, but I don't really care too much about it because, you know, who cares about the people in the back seat? I mean, I can fit back there. I'm 5'11", getting in and out of this vehicle, not an issue. And even though you're not going to be stretching out back there in the rear seats, it's fine. You can fit adults back there. Uh, definitely more than enough for children. And the seat quality, the comfort is all very high. And because this isn't a super large vehicle, it's easy to drive. It's easy to place out on the road and you can fit this in more garage spaces, things like that in just everyday kind of parking lot maneuvers, driving this in the city, uh, having a more petite vehicle is pretty nice. So I can forgive some of the lack of cargo, if you will. Uh, I mean, you gotta ask yourself just how much cargo capacity do you really need? Because the trunk space, again, even though it's not the largest in the segment, it's not like useless or anything like that. It's definitely fine for what it is. And you have a spare tire back there as well. And of course, you can fold down these seats 60-40, uh, which will definitely help out with the cargo volume a little bit more in case you need it. So overall, well-executed machine, just like every other year that I've tested this car. The subtle improvements are definitely nice to see, mainly because it's good to see that Mazda cares about their products and they just want to make it better. Uh, even though they don't really have to, they could have just chilled after 2020 uh, because all the changes that they made since then were fantastic, but now they've given us an even better CX-5. So take advantage of it if you're in the segment. This is kind of my go-to, in my opinion, and for a lot of car reviewers, they really do recommend this over the competition. So it's overall a great value proposition. Take advantage of it. Thanks again for watching this video. Take care and goodbye.